Hey, John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got this question that I think is a really good question that a lot of people have asked me, but I've sort of, uh, I, I want to say waffled, but it's not quite waffled. It's just I haven't made up my mind on this thing. And I think it's because there's two different possible paths. And so maybe, maybe the answer is really that there's not one true answer to this, but it depends on your situation, like most things in life. So the question is basically whether or not there's some value in deliberate practice for software developers, for programmers, and what that deliberate practice should look like. So if you're not familiar with the term deliberate practice, it basically means that you're actually practicing on a specific skill or focusing on that thing rather than generally like doing something that's going to improve you. So a good parallel would be in the music world, right? So if you're playing guitar, right, just playing songs is practice. You could practice playing songs, but it's not deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is practicing your scales or practicing a specific chord over and over again, right? That's deliberate practice. And you know, there's a lot of books that that have talked about this idea of deliberate practice. Uh, one of them, Robert Green, uh, by Robert Green, called Mastery, which I've I've listened to a couple of times on on audio version. It's a really long book, by the way, uh, but it really hits home the point of deliberate practice and how important it is. And basically, you know, if you do something for 10 years doing deliberate practice, you'll become a master. You'll become an expert. You'll basically walk into this Zen mode where you can do the thing without really thinking about it. And I think that applies to a lot of situations. Uh, and there's other books that, you know, talk about similar concepts. You've probably heard of this 10,000 hours of practice type of thing. I'm not totally sold on that. But anyway, the idea is that some amount of deliberate practice can definitely be really useful and a lot of really uh, successful people, you know, experts in their field, uh, got there through deliberate practice. So the question is, does this apply to programmers? If, if so, how so? So I think that yes and no, it applies to programmers, right? So this is where I've kind of debated this. Uh, for getting good at actually just writing code, right, doing something specific like algorithms, Deliberate practice, absolutely, yes, will help you. So th this is kind of the weird thing, right? Because a software developer, right? Okay, I mean, we have different terms, programmer, software developer. I'm going to use the term software developer. But a software developer does a lot more than write code. You know this, right? <laughs> you you spend a lot of time in your, in your email inbox, answering emails and communicating with people and writing documentation or unit tests or whatever, right? It's not just writing code. It's There's a lot of other pieces to this. And, and managing your career in general has a lot of other pieces. As you know, if you've listened to my How to Market Yourself as a Software Developer course, or you've heard of my material on that, right? There's a lot. So, if so, just you know, it, it's a little bit different than a guitar player who who can do deliberate practice on a very specific thing and get a very specific achieved result, or a deliberate practice for a track runner, or deliberate practice for some kind of athlete, or or some kind of very specialized skill that is kind of a one track focus skill you know obviously there's different areas for a programmer and that's where i can i think my answer goes to is that you can pick different disciplines within software development and you can use deliberate practice to enhance those so programming is is one of them but that can even be subdivided really probably the most beneficial place for most most software developers is to focus on programming slash algorithms, creating algorithms, right? This is where you can basically go and you can uh, practice creating, solving uh, simple programming problems, algorithms. If you if you want a good book that has problems, like what I'm talking about, check out Programming Pearls. I also have a Pluralsight course on how to pass an interview that goes through some of this also, the problem solving aspect. Uh, you can also go to a site called topcoder.com and you have to kind of navigate through there and find the algorithms section. But if you can do the algorithm section, they have this like competition arena where you can, like, it'll give you problems and you can try and solve those problems by writing code to solve them. That's really good deliberate practice. That's how I got my skills up when I was uh, back when I was a C++ uh, programmer, right? And I was trying to become better at C++. I just, I was like, how do I do this? And, uh, you know, I was, the, the biggest thing that helped me was going to top coder and solving problems over and over again, solving all these different problems. And then I became really good at algorithms, which really was the biggest benefit to my ability to program 
overall, right? So that's that's really where where I would say you know there there's some people that do code katas, which I think there's some benefit to that as far as deliberate practice, but I think it's a little overvalued. And I think you can spend too much time trying to do this kind of deliberate practice where it doesn't really benefit you as a software developer, where your time is better spent just creating apps, uh, you know, learning how to uh, do things like marketing yourself, like like enhancing your career, uh, increasing your education, right? Um, and another reason why I'll say that this is true is because most of us don't work in one single programming language, right? If we were all C programmers, right, back in the day, and we didn't have 50 billion libraries to work with, and it was just about how good can we write effective embedded C code, and some of you do, this is your, your job, right? Then, yeah, deliberate practice is going to help you a whole lot there because it's a very focused discipline. But if you do deliberate practice to become an uber master of C sharp or Java or JavaScript, but you're then you're doing these other programming languages and you're using all these other technologies and only a small percentage of your time is writing hardcore C sharp code. What benefit is that going to get you? It's not going to get you a huge benefit. So, you know, you got to wait. You only have so much time in the world. Obviously, if you had all the time in the world, I would say deliberate practice everything, become a master of JavaScript and C sharp and Java and SQL and all this stuff. But in reality, you can't do that, right? You don't have time. So, Pick a couple of areas to do deliberate practice that you want to really specialize and increase your skills in, but don't try and apply it blanket everywhere and don't think that deliberate practice is the only way to become a master. There's no such thing in programming as a master because it's it's too multidiscipline. There's too much out there. There's too many technologies, right? There, it's a changing, growing environment. Ima imagine if you were playing a sport and the sport rules kept on changing all the time. You couldn't master it. So don't try, like just try to l improve your ability to learn. That's the, if you want something there, you know, improve that ability and, and improve a couple of specific areas that are, algorithms is a really good one because whatever you do, programming is always gonna be related to algorithms. So I, I devote some deliberate practice time there. But in general, you know, it, it's not quite the same thing. It doesn't apply so much to software development in general. Well, all right. So <laughs> hopefully that, you know, that's, that's what I'm thinking about that right now. If you disagree, you know, feel free to leave me a comment below and, and tell me why uh, or, or send a video response back. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's, that's my thoughts on deliberate practice right now as far as software development. I'll probably change them in the future, but I've, I've thought about this for, for quite some time and, and that's where I've, I've landed at this point. Well, if you think this video would be helpful to someone, I would love it if you shared the video, give it a thumbs up, and even subscribe to this channel. That would be awesome. All right, take care, and I will talk to you next time. See you later.